If I had 50 lives, I would sacrifice them all for the welfare of the suffering poor of England. I have fought and suffered with the very people whose hard lot I have striven constantly to alleviate. Here I lie, many miles from the place I was born. It is impossible to describe the terror in my mind when the cell door closed firmly shut and left me to my thoughts. My dismal Newgate cell is an emblem of hell itself and some may say, be the entrance to it. Tomorrow, the sun will rise for me for the very last time. Before then, I must tell you my story. I am a Jamaican and was born in its capital city, Kingston, in the year of our Lord, 1786. I am what they call mulatto or mixed race. The second son to a white Scottish father and freed black mother. She may have been free, but her ancestors were slaves, African slaves, and came to my birthplace in chains to harvest white gold. That's sugar, in case you didn't know. The sugar and rum they were involved in making dominated island life and fueled the slave economy. My ancestors found themselves here because of the triangular trade. Their fate was sealed when some unknown British ship set sail for West Africa. Like many before them, they were brought here as slaves and taken on the terrible Atlantic Middle Passage to the West Indies. The profits from their sale brought the sugar and rum that was returned to either Bristol, Liverpool or London, the slave port. I am forever conflicted in the knowledge that my father's family profited from the enslavement of my mother's. As a child, I bore witness to how work on the sugar plantations condemned each and every slave to a life of unrelenting brutality in the tropical heat. Sugar making was so labour intensive because the juice from a crushed cane soured within 24 hours. Large numbers of slaves were needed to ensure that the cane could be processed in the mills soon after it had been cut. There were so many back-breaking tasks to complete. I witnessed them all growing up. The ground had to be dug, hoed, weeded, planted and fertilised with manure, all under the West Indian sun. At harvest time, slave gangs worked under white overseers cutting cane and leading it onto carts. Any slacking quickly led to the whip. At the sugar mill, cane was crushed and boiled, extracting the sticky juice. Operating machinery was very dangerous. Slaves could be maimed or killed. The boiling houses were unbearably hot in the summer. The sugar juice was left in barrels until a brown syrup called molasses could be drawn off. This was used to make our famous Jamaican rum. The clearer sugar left behind was packed into barrels and shipped to England. This would be a journey that I too would take as a young lad. My father's status meant that I never really knew the back-breaking cruelty of the Jamaican sugar plantation. Slaves worked from four o'clock in the morning until sunset, and at harvest time could work 18-hour days. Overseers tortured these poor souls, who sometimes worked 48 hours without a break. Some ran away to join the free communities in the mountainous interior, they were known as the Maroons and they fought back against those who had enslaved them. Their example inspired me to value and fight for my freedom. The turnkeys have refused to allow my little boy John to see me. It's May the 1st tomorrow, but I will not see another summer on my dear boy again. 
How I wish I could carry John from our Marylebone home to sneak a glimpse of a match at Mr. Lord's new ground. I remember when I was John's tender age and would watch cricket in the cane fields. The planters encouraged slaves to play and I always thought the game was a great leveller. With bat or ball, an African could better his master and in that moment, he could be free. My life in Jamaica came to an end in 1801 when as a child of 15, my father sent me back to his homeland to study the law. As I boarded the ship, I could see my mother was devastated. However, I was too excited at the time to feel sad. I had often seen British ships in Kingston Harbour and was curious to see if the mother country, as they called it, lived up to how my father had described it. As I boarded the merchant ship bound for Edinburgh, I realised I would soon find out if he had been telling the truth. <laughs>